Hi everyone and welcome to an all new video. My name is Tanya Khanejo and I'm a travel vlogger here for giving you a lot of travel advice today. And I've decided that I'll make this a series that before visiting any destination or making videos from there or publishing videos from there, I'll give you a complete information dump on these destinations. And you know what's really hot these days? You guys and also the weather. <laughs> the weather has been extremely extremely hot at least this past week. And I realized that our vision destinations ke bare mein baat karne wale hu. Uh, are hot places their climate is extremely hot but this guide is for you to start planning your trip September onwards and today we are discussing UAE and Oman UAE to dekho sab log jate hain because it's literally 4 hours away from India and it makes for a great destination for especially first time international visitors i have seen that there's been a huge influx in the number of indians at least who travel to dubai but why oman oman is probably not on many travelers uh, travel radar but might i tell you i went there in february and i was so pleasantly surprised to see that this is such a good destination to be at as opposed to uae which is mostly all about fancy buildings swanky lifestyle a lot of expensive of things Oman is all about nature and if you are planning a trip to UAE definitely give it a shot that you also think of Oman or other nearby places like Saudi or Jordan and the reason why I also went to Oman was similar that I went to Abu Dhabi so I decided ki ek aur country dekhna to banta hai yahan tak aaye hu main so in dono countries ki information main thoda sa side by side dena chahti hu and I'm also ready over here with all of my notes let's start with geography like i said these countries lie in the middle east jo UAE hai especially it's surrounded by the persian gulf oman and saudi the and it's a very small country as such but it's made up of seven emirates and you already know of dubai and abu dhabi as one of those seven emirates and when you come to oman you see that it has a long coastline oman is surrounded by yemen saudi uae and also the arabian sea and this is how the countries are located on the map so now let's talk about phone network i have been an airtel subscriber and user for the longest time and what i usually do while traveling abroad is that i turn on the airtel international roaming pack and international roaming packs by airtel are very economical now starting at just 133 rupees per day the most convenient reason for me uh, for using international roaming is that i can pay for things on the go whether it's hotel bookings credit card bills or even cab costs and that is possible because i can receive otps on my own number one of the reasons i don't rely on public wifi is because they're unreliable patchy and not available everywhere and that is where international roaming by airtel comes in handy because you're always connected to the internet whether it's navigation or an emergency or even posting stories real time and i can always receive calls on my own number which uh, ensures continuity in work no matter which country i land in like when i went from uae to oman I had phone network accessible immediately upon landing which is so empowering. So with Airtel international roaming I can easily travel from one country to another and always stay connected. I have personally almost stopped buying local sims and I've been doing that in recent times especially Even when I went to Europe I did not buy local sims. Now talking of currency because obviously budget planning and currency exchanges are a huge part of any trip. So this is the currency exchange rate of UAE and this is the currency exchange rate of Oman. Still looks reasonably better than traveling to a lot of other countries but UAE can get expensive because the cost of things is quite expensive over there. So whether you book activities or even take a taxi over there it can really add up. So I'll share some money saving tips towards the end of this video. And Oman on the other hand the currency is is one of the strongest probably the third strongest in the world look at this exchange rate it's even higher than exchanging your indian rupees to dollars first day i landed in the country i withdrew 200 riyals omani riyals it showed 43000 in my bank withdrawal which is so scary because i've never withdrawn such a huge amount in one go in india at least but to my surprise at least the cost of things over there was quite nice and very comfortable and eventually maine jitni currency withdraw ki thi usme se almost 50% bach gayi meri so i effectively only ended up spending close to 25 to 30000 in the country which was pretty budget again i'll come to the money saving aspect pretty soon now let's talk about the best times to visit so for united arab emirates the best time to visit is in the winter months so from november to march makes for a really good time because the weather is going to be more moderate and comfortable for you to even be outside but even if you visit in the summer months i must say ki yahan pe jitni bhi jagah hoti hai wahan pe uh, you know air conditioning hoti hai especially the malls and if your agenda is just shopping and staying indoors 
you can still go even in the summer months and i must add that in the winter months everything is going to be more expensive so if you're planning to visit these countries make sure that you make the bookings now so for oman the ideal time to visit is between october to april but i must say that the shoulder months where the people are going to be lesser and the des destinations are going to be less crowded are going to be september and february i visited in february and the country was very empty and even the uh, hotels and all were cheaper there's a place in the south side which is called salala and salala is very green and very picturesque especially in september and the crowd is also going to be lesser talking about the season and climate the summer months are extremely hot and the winters are relatively mild uh, with temperatures ranging from 15 to 25 degrees and in the summer months the temperatures can soar up to 40 degrees oman has a relatively more diverse climate the temperatures are usually ranging from 25 to 30 degrees and the inland uh, regions can have milder temperatures as well especially in the winter months ranging from 10 to 15 degrees so you would imagine that it'll be hot but actually you may want to carry at least a light sweatshirt now what should you pack and what kind of clothes should you carry with you i would uh, suggest that you carry light breathable cotton clothes linen pants or cotton pants uh, and also dresses which are going to be cotton material in oman you're expected to dress up modestly and you have to cover your shoulders and also wear clothes which are below your knee and this applies for both men and women unless you are at a beach where you can even wear a bikini in uae at least dressing modestly in the bigger cities is not as such expected because as you may have seen dubai mein sab log bahut hi casually dress up hote hain but if you're doing a cross country tour and visiting the other emirates as well as a rule of thumb do try and uh, dress up modestly and if you're visiting a mosque then you have to cover your shoulders wear something below the knees and even cover your head so for example i visited the grand mosque in abu dhabi and over there to get the entry i had to purchase an extra head scarf which i wasn't originally carrying and even in oman you are denied entry completely even as a tourist if you don't have a head scarf so remember to carry it with you apart from that don't forget to carry sunglasses hats sunscreen greens because you want to protect yourself and your skin from sun damage especially now coming to the popular destinations so in uh, ua obviously dubai everybody wants to visit there so burj khalifa of course palm jumeirah dubai mall and you can also enjoy these dessert safaris and you can book them on these platforms which organize group tours or paid tours abu dhabi i visited recently and i have a full video on all the places that i visited but uh, just to name a few you can visit the sheikh zayed grand mosque ferrari world oh my god i loved ferrari world it was so thrilling and so enjoyable especially because it has the world's fastest roller coaster additionally you can also visit sharja where i have personally uh, been and i really enjoyed the desert safaris over there I, there was this one particular desert that i visited which had a completely red landscape the sand was red and it was absolutely gorgeous you can also visit some really beautiful beaches because obviously there's the persian gulf next to ue also coming to oman now i went to the capital city of muscat which is where the trip usually begins from and with in muscat you can explore the royal opera house or sultan qaboos grand mosque and also there's a place called matra where all the tourists at least stay and the matra area is very nice for walking especially in the evening because it's right next to this uh, water area the ships are also anchored and you can see some local boats as well apart from that i in my trip went to damaniyat islands then sur nizwa and misfat and i will do detailed vlogs on each of these destinations as well but like i already mentioned salala is a very major tourist attraction but only target going there beyond the month of september or in september okay now let's talk about visa and flights because obviously if you're planning a trip these are very critical pieces of information for uae you can apply for an e visa which means that you don't have to submit your passport at an embassy and it also means that the process is going to be pretty simple the cost of the visa for indian tourists is 7500 and once you apply for the visa you can get it within 3 to 7 days based on approvals oman on the other hand does not offer an e visa and the cost of the visa is 4500 so in this case you will have to submit it at an embassy to get your visa in place but if you have an existing us b1 b2 visa which is the tourist visa ek to you can apply for the ua visa on arrival so you don't even have to apply for the e visa and the on arrival visa for you is going to be less costly at around 2000 rupees and you can apply for the oman visa online if you have an existing us tourist visa which is great so i have a us tourist visa and mujhe oman ke visa ko secure karne mein zyada time nahi laga once i applied for it i literally got my visa within one day which is so amazing and another option for you is as an indian tourist that if you're anyway going to uae and if you want to plan another country you can also consider jordan wahan pe visa on arrival mil jata hai hum indians ko and flight ki baat kare to uae takes around 4 hours and oman takes around 3 hours and that is why they're also very convenient to visit 
visit from India because the flight time is also not that long. When it comes to the flight cost, in peak season, it'll cost you around 20 to 25,000 to go to either of these places round trip. And in summer months, it can be less expensive also. Like I checked Oman's flight check kari thi in the month of May. And I think round trip was coming to around 10,000. But obviously, you don't want to visit in the summer unless you have a business trip or something. Now that your fixed costs are in place, like flights and visas, now let's talk about some variable costs like hotel bookings and especially money saving trips for UAE and Oman. So first I'll go over UAE and I have a lot of money saving tips for you. Believe me, it's going to be really good. So ek toh, obviously you have to compare hotel prices before booking them and compare them really extensively across a lot of platforms, especially in peak season. You know, the cost of hotels is very dependent on the season also. Like I was checking some hotel costs in the month of May and literally in Yas Island, I saw that some five star hotels were going for as low as 3,000 to 5,000 rupees, which in peak season cost you around 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 even. So if you just want to plan a shopping trip or a business trip to uh, Dubai or Abu Dhabi, it's so convenient to travel in the summer because the cost of hotels is also lesser. But on an average, a medium priced Airbnb or hotel could cost you anywhere from 6,000 to 8,000. So if you're sharing the accommodation with somebody, then it'll come down to around 3,500 or 4,000 per person. And also check for locations. You want to be in prime location so that you spend less money on transportation. If you're Dubai, visit kar rahe ho, try and use as much public transportation as possible because cabs are expensive Expensive. You can get something known as the Noel card, which will help you save extensively on traveling around because once you have a Noel card, you preload it with some money and then you can use it for literally traveling anywhere. Take a metro or get on a bus and uh, that will help you save a lot of money. But one thing about Abu Dhabi that I noticed was the on-call taxis hoti na, jo ke side mein mil jati hai. those are actually less expensive than if you use an app to book taxis like Uber or Kareem. At least 10 to 20 dirhams ka bhi difference padega tha kafi mein toh, and that was really eye-opening. If you're staying in any hotel, on Yas Island, there's something known as Yas Island Express. So if you take the, these buses, they're absolutely free of cost and they stop at multiple destinations. You can check out the timetable. I will try and share a picture here or I will also link it. So these are some ways in which you can save costs on transportation. And also if you're booking any activities, uska bhi cost achche se compare kare na, because on some websites the cost is lesser. But if you book it from the official tourism website, it's going to be less expensive in, on some days. Just like when I was in Abu Dhabi, I found out from the Skydiving Institute that the cost of doing skydiving for me was 1600 dirhams with photography included which comes down to around 45,000 rupees but my friend who went there booked a package for 60,000 for doing the same activity. I think in package package the transportation be involved tha, which is why it was more expensive but I thought it was difference kaise ho gaya, even with transportation. I know that the city is a hour from the still seemed like a big difference. So be sure and mindful that you compare a lot of packages and see which activity you're doing and how much is it exactly costing you. Also, there are a lot of free activities that you can do. Like going to free beaches or uh, going to places like Dubai Fountain, Dubai Marina walk or some souks and markets which is absolutely free even going to places like the spice market and you don't really have to pay anything upfront for these activities so always consider having a good mix of these free activities and maybe one or two paid activities which will not burn a big hole in your budget also explore local street food markets and budget restaurants so before you head to any restaurant just to avoid that element of surprise ki kitna mehenga hoga Look it up online and see what is the average bu budget for one person. Even if you're going for activities like, oh, breakfast on top of Burj Khalifa, do not forget to pre-book it and at least check the prices online because you might just end up going there and getting extremely surprised by how expensive it may be. Now coming to budget tips for Oman, I feel like Oman as a destination is not that expensive because the cost of things is very less, just like booking a hotel. So on an average in February, when I booked a hotel over there, it cost me around 3000 rupees per night. And if you can share it with somebody that is very economical because then it'll come down to 1500 per person. And the good thing about the whole country is that you can also wild camp over there legally, which means you can pretty much camp anywhere. So if you're okay with camping or spending the night in a car, then you can save on the accommodation even further. And I love countries where legal camping allowed hoti hai anywhere. You can practically just park anywhere, which is away from civilization and have a really really pleasant stay experience. So those are the two accommodation related tips at least that the accommodation itself is anywhere not expensive plus you can also consider camping if you're a solo or adventurous kind of a person. You can consider using public transportation. So the public transportation at least outside of Muscat is not that strong. In Muscat I felt like fibhi buses or shared taxis bahut sari thi. if you want to visit the other places you may need a car. But even intercity travel is not that expensive because you can opt for 
for intercity buses also in going from one city to another. When I went from Muscat to Sur and I took an intercity bus, it only cost me 700 baisa. I think 700 baisa to INR comes out to around 1400 rupees, which is very good for intercity travel. But the only problem starts when you visit other cities altogether outside of Muscat, where even the transportation within the city is not that strong. So relying on public transport is obviously not a very good bet. But uh, I've heard from a lot of other travelers, especially who I met on my trip and even from a lot of public forums that if you want to not rent a car and if you're doing a very, very budget trip, then even hitchhiking is an option because people in Oman are very kind and they would be very willing to help you in case you want to hitchhike or if you want to take their support in traveling locally within the cities. So that is an option, but I would say ki even renting a car did not turn out to be that expensive. So I met a friend on my bus from Muscat to Sur and uh, fortunately she had an international driving license and I did not for this particular trip like an idiot because I have never used road trips I have never used international driving license nahi use kiya. and in Oman Indians cannot drive without an international driving license so ultimately we ended up renting a car together and that helped me save a lot of money and also it was very convenient to be uh, traveling around in a car and that car cost was not as expensive but let me come to that in the next point instead of looking it up online go to the actual car rental agency and then get your uh, rental car because airports pay cars are more expensive so if you directly book it from Muscat itself it's going to cost you more instead of uh, renting it from Sur for example we rented it from Sur and it cost us 10 riyals per day around uh, 2000 rupees a day and 2000 rupees is not that expensive for a rental car because it's much more here in India itself and overall even the cost of fuel is not that much besides that when it comes to food opt for local street food because it's healthy it's hygienic and you will be able to easily eat a lot of good food over there and so you can make nice sandwiches nice salads for yourself and you can pretty much cook your own food as well but even if you have local street food which is going to be a lot of Mediterranean cuisine uh, that is also very nice and healthy you can eat a lot of hummus a lot of uh, good local bread so on an average the food over there is going to cost you anywhere between one to three riyals per meal which again is pretty budget for traveling to a Middle Eastern country in my opinion and uh, especially for us Indians you can very easily get Indian food as well because 50% of Oman's population is all immigrants you will find a lot of Indians Pakistanis Afghanis who are settled in Oman. So you can pretty much talk to most people in Hindi, which I felt was really cool because Flora, who was with me over there, I could be a guide to her as well because I could ask all my local Indian people ki hume kaha jana chahiye aur wo Hindi mein unse baat kar pa rahi thi. So that was pretty cool as well. So likewise, because there are a lot of Indians in India, you will get a lot of Indian food too easily. And uh, I think you'll be able to find veg options also, North Indian also, South Indian also, everything you will get If you're shopping over there, go to these local markets, obviously spice markets, souks, similar to UAE but here you will get more things and if you are looking for souvenirs definitely get the Omani Halwa back home it is so delicious that and Omani dates also so these are two things that you should definitely consider buying from over there as souvenirs and if you get them from local shops, it's going to cost you also lesser. Uske se when it comes to activities, there are so many natural activities that you can do. Like you can go to places like Wadi Shab, which is a valley with a, a water stream in between. And you have to basically hike till the end point where natural pools nahi shuru hote. And once you reach the natural pools, you can basically just swim in them. There are a lot of these natural places and unki bhi entry fee kuch bahut zyada nahi hoti. Do not hesitate in accepting local hospitality because the locals in Oman are very friendly. I, for example, spent a night camping on a beach. So don't hesitate in being spontaneous and also talking to locals over there. It can turn into some pretty special experiences. And that was all that I had, all the tips that I had for UAE and Oman. And I hope you enjoyed this video and you do not visit these places without watching this video because believe me you will remember this later on and it will help you and now I'm actually genuinely putting in more effort in giving you these amazing guides you can follow me on places like LinkedIn Twitter Instagram and obviously you're subscribed here on YouTube or so I'm guessing and if you're not subscribed what are you doing please hit that subscribe button and with this I hope you start planning your uh, trips to these destinations for the winter season and even if you don't make it this year next year the year after that koi baat nahi, the world is your oyster and as usual keep supporting i will see you in the next one bye bye guys